Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today we got a system from the user Guli Guy in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending in their system. And without further ado, let's get into this. So, it's on the workshop, should be ready for us to rock and roll, so here it is. It's called the A Nara Star System, version 34 by the looks of things, so... Really a lot of updates gone into this over the time. Um, let's see what we got here. Oh, hello. Right, straight into the action. So the Anara Star System. Welcome, Traveller. Your spaceship has just entered the Anara System, a binary system that was colonised by humans in... Uh, that's 300... Billy? Is that 300... Yeah, 300... No, 300 million AD. Yeah, 300 million AD. Uh, the translations of the object's names will appear on the right of the description. Oh, that's good. We like that. Right, so where are we? So, not a lot of stars in the background. Okay, so, it's a dice, a binary. Yep. Right, what have we got? So, the star itself. Anara, an orb of light and terror. A G-type main sequence star that hosts five planets and a twin star. Next up, we've got Sha'ad. Meaning elegant shadow. Here it is. The first planet from the A star um, is a hot world of no moons. The planet lacks high amounts of minerals but has some icy patches that survive where its surface never receives any light. The radioactive waste sand at the mercy of its powerful sun is called star. It's a star icon because it casts a small shadow on the parent once in a while. Okay. Cool. Next up we've got this guy. Grywall. The floating sea. Oh, this looks nice. Got a nice moon as well. Oh, an Earth-like moon. Okay. That's a nice looking gas giant. I do like that. Very, very nice. The, uh, the most massive planet in the binary system. It has a prominent bright blue colour due to a toxic gas that has been dumped in the cloud layers by a group of humans called the Zadox, formerly known as the Z Zado Zadokan Imperium. It has several tiny moons and only one major moon. So the, the major moon here is Zada, which is this guy here. The world of wilderness. The only major moon thought to have been captured by its strong gravity, the vibrant world is renounced for its dense tropical rainforests and jungles. The skies are filled with floating plants that create a very unique habitat. In the oceans, life takes sanctuary near shores where a large kelp forest exists. The coral reefs, however, are the most inhabited part of the seas. Virtually everywhere in Zada's life thrives in astonishing biodiversity. Excellent. There we go. So a nice view of the planet behind it as well. Let's do a little surface view. So let's go say here, there you go, so pretty much on the twilight side there, and then you got Gas Giant over there, let's try and get a better view of it, let's go, let's try here, look around, there you go, nice view of the Gas Giant from the planet, excellent, or well, the moon I should say, cool, uh, what are the other guys here, these are all reds, I'm guessing these are all miners, yeah, minor objects, okay, nice. So next up, we are heading to uh, the living planet. So that is this one. Chasa? I'm not sure how to say that at all. Uh, but here it is. So the living planet. It is the home world of the Zadox and is most inhabited by plants and the inferior multicellular life forms. The planet has blue oceans rich in complex life. The surface dwelling life forms are still very primitive, unlike their aquatic counterparts. Okay. Nice two-tone atmosphere on it as well, if you look carefully. Looking good. We got Iris. The Illuminator. The major moon of it. It has a barren and cratered surface hidden away in the dust. The bright moon illuminates the planet with a faint yellowish light during the night. There you go. It's a nice earth light world, isn't it? Looks good. Very nice. Next up we're heading to Copa, which is over here. Eye of the Devil. Oh hello. Okay. Purple. Or pinky purple. More of a pink, isn't it? Magenta pink. A purple ice giant feared for its dark hexagonal... F oh, that's at the bottom. Oh, yes. Okay. Hexagonal storm. The saying goes that when you look at this eye, it will take control of your soul. Therefore, the planet has been visited only once. Accompanied by its mysterious moons, the ice giant has uh, two sets of rings, an A ring that is very densely packed with rock particles, and a B ring that is separated by its denser counterpart... Uh, um, denser counterpart due to Vic, a shepherd moon, which is there. That's little Vic. So you've got the, yeah, the A and B ring. You can see two separate rings together with that. Okay. So first up, we're heading to Grush. Midas Dream. As its name suggests, it's a very metallic moon rich in minerals like iron, gold, diamond, copper, coal, and uranium. The big canyon on its equator that splits the moon in half exposes Crusher's mineral-rich soil. 
Hey, nice. The canyon is evidence of the existence of two dominant tectonic plates. So that's a lot of metal there. Okay, nice. We've also got Kano, the buried river. What's this? A very volcanically volcanically active world. While well, most of its volcanoes have gone dormant due to the cooling of its insides, massive volcanoes and geysers still dominate the visible surface. Excellent. Okay. Next up, we've got the Vixen, which is here. The freckled moon. A moon shaped by a purple, snowy, and icy crust, likely made out of the same materials as copper. The blue freckles are ice pockets of extremely high salt concentration. The moon is rather crater due to frequent asteroid impacts. There you go. Looking good. Okay, where are we heading next? Next, I'm heading to Lopos. So, the rest of these are all minor moons, aren't they? Yeah, the red ones. So, it's nice that they've coloured them like that for us, actually. So, that's good. Okay, quite a lot of moons there. So, Lopos. Bandit of the Heavens. Here it is. Oh, nice gas giant here as well. I like the colour on that one. Looking very nice. Okay, so. It's the furthest planet from the A star and has a giant dark storm at the centre. The storm makes the planet look like a bandit. Lopos is known for its very low axis tilt, which indicates the planet had a perfect formation. The winds on the planet are the fastest in the system. It's a nice looking world. It does look good. So, moons. This is the first one here. Uh, is it Vif? The snow ringed. A moon of ring or a, a moon with a ring of ice in the snow. Shortly after its formation, it had liquid water on its surface. Its fast rotation may have caused the water to gather at the equator. Later, it would slowly freeze off. The reddish patches on its surface are not copper patches but oxidized iron. This further proves the theory of the liquid water by throwing atmosphere into the mix. Okay. Next up, we've got Burrus over here. A world very identical to Enceladus. It has massive geysers that emit tremendous amounts of materials which form a faint cloudy ring around Lopus. It has an ocean beneath its crust kept alive by tidal forces of the giant planet it orbits. The ocean is home to a very simple bacteria. Okay. Next up we've got Vata and Vu. So they're the next one out. Two binary dwarf planets. Guess they're over here. Okay. Right, oh, hello. What's going on here? Ooh. Two burning dwarf planets locked in eternal dance with one another. They will end up crashed into each other near the end of the system's life. I can see why. I guess there's some sort of tidal heating. Oh, what's going on? Ooh. Yeah, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Okay. Next up, we've got Icar. The Eris analogue of the system. Very icy, unsignificant, and cratered. So there's your Eris equivalent. Okay. Next up, we've got Leo Leote. Leotir, over here. A ring planet with a, with one a major moon, but barely, but not spherical. So there it is. The Ring Destroyer. I'm guessing that will uh, ruin its ring system at some point, but there it is. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Looks like it's uh, built off the texture of Mars. You can see like the four volcanoes there. Looks pretty cool. Okay. So where are we heading next? So Anara B. Okay, over here now. Second star. A G-type yellow dwarf, less massive but slightly sm bigger than its twin. All right. Okay. First of the planets, we've got Yikon, the new Terra. Oh, I love the two-tone atmosphere on that. You can see that the red sort of area on the twilight region. That looks really good. That one. That's a very very nice looking Earth flight planet. Um, a ringed houseful planet of life. It is home to the Yakers, another group of humans with a distinct civilization and rival to the Zadox. It possesses no moons. It's a great looking planet. I really like that. Really, really nicely done. Good, good. That's a yeah, great, great looking Earth flight design there. Um, next up, we've got Kalasmos. Kalasmos, the Great Attractor. Pink trail. It's a star, isn't it? I'm not sure what that is. Where's that pink trail? Oh, it's that moon there. Let's go to. That's better. So, there you are. A ring gas giant that has the most moons end of any in the system. The Kalasmos moons is home to a unique set of moons and its tiny solar system in a way. Its beauty is a marvel in the dark void of space along with its moons. These are all inspiring rings of the most valuable asset. One never just looks away at the sight of the uh, Kalasmos. Okay, so moons. We've got Hazan, the white marble. A very pretty moon, arguably the most pretty of them all. It possesses a thick icy crust and a complex web of cave systems rich in glowing amethyst crystals and organic matter that has arrived here via comets. Hazan has a warm ocean under its crust. 
with very complex life. The underground hot springs are the biggest source of new minerals and organic matter to sustain its life. Nice. We've got a Rally over here. So an icy moon with the most craters surface in the system. They were accumulated during the bombardment period of the system. Pretty straightforward. We've got Nero, 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 Nero so. A moon seemingly made out of cheese, but it's actually a fine brown coloured dust that can easily choke men to death. Oi. Okay. Then we've got Ava... Is it, what's it called? Aranos. Uh, Ava... No, it's spelt differently. Aranos, but this one's Aravos. It's got an N for an O. Yeah, okay. We'll call it Aranos. The second largest moon, like most, Aranos is mostly made of ice. The green patches are frozen pockets of sulfur dioxide that um, come from another planet. They quickly froze over after they arrive via a comet shower. Okay. Very nice. Uh, next up we have got Rosar over here. Most uh, massive moon that is possible. Unlike the other life forms, plants are very complex here. They are from the dominant tiger biomes that thrive due to Rosar's cold climate. So this is the moon we spawned in with, isn't it? Yeah, it looks quite good, doesn't it? Let's have a little closer look underneath. There you go. It's very nice conditions underneath, looking good. It's just a different atmosphere. Okay. Next up we got Roskin. Oh, where are we? Oh, is there no description for... Oh, it doesn't look like there is. Rosa, it goes to... Yeah, there's no description for this one. Okay. There it is. Oh, it's just a miner, that's why. It hasn't got the red trail colour, that's what threw me off. Okay, so. Next up we head to Zara. A planet where Arano sulfur dioxide originates from. Zara is a very toxic planet with a nasty atmosphere. The atmosphere is full of toxic air and very thick. If you ever walk on the surface, you'll be crushed in milliseconds. So it's a very toxic -y, like Venus-like uh, intensity with the pressure as well. Oi. It's looking pretty dodgy there then. Okay. Now we've got Mol. Over here. Cold desert shaped by ice and snow. Its winds are so fast they erode and flatten any mountains that may form. Moles glaciers lay mostly on the ground. The planet forms in a binary of its massive moon. And they are very close together, aren't they? Oh, wow. We... Okay. There we go. And it's got uh, the moon as a description as well. So there it is. Um, Aridonia. A grey moon with the highest mountains of any objects in the system. The composition of its mysterious green spots have yet to be determined. Okay. Maybe it's related to the one earlier we saw with the green green bits on it. That have come from that Sahara planet. And next time we've got our arch. What is going on here? Oh, hello. Right. Another nice looking ice giant. Our arch is a blue ice giant far, far away from the main system. It has a high axle tilt and three major moons. Its blue colour is caused by methane, though its real colour is more pale. In this situation, the colours of Arches' bands have been enhanced to make it more interesting. The planet is the windiest in the system, reaching wind speeds of up to 2,000 kilometres an hour. Okay. Lots of red moons in there. All the minor objects. We've got Aaron over here. A very, very grey metallic moon. It's quite similar to Crush in both composition and appearance, but lacks a high gold concentration. The black spot on its surface are dried up lakes of lava. Okay. I think there's one we missed. Where is it? This one. Rockilla. A moon that is so close at our arch, the tidal forces cause large cracks in the thick ice crust. The subsurface ocean is way too unstable to have any life. Okie dokie. And we got this one next. Uh... Exampfe Exampfean? The largest moon of Arach has a very thick and hazy atmosphere. The atmosphere is so thick it makes the moon 26% bigger on what in reality it is. The moon's weak gravity is not able to support the massive atmosphere and vomits small amounts during the summer period. Okie dokie. So, there it is. Looking underneath. There you go. Okay. There you are. And that is the end of the description. Let's see if there's any more secrets further out. That looks to be everything. Yes. Okay, there you go. So created by a googly guy. Googly guy. I want to say Google, but it's googly guy. <laughs> so there it is. So a massive thank you to them for sending in this system. And yeah, what do you guys think of this down below in the comments? I really like the Earthlight worlds. And I think that was a very great collection. And gas giants as well. It's a really, really nice collection of um, gas giants and Earthlights especially. I mean, the gas giant design on these are really cool. I mean, the band colours. I really like this one here with the dark, like, stripe across it that's really cool earth light world you can see the two tones this one's definitely the best i think it was i think it was that one 
looks great. We can see the two-tone atmospheres on it, this one as well, looking good. They're very, very nice collection there, They're like more realistic kind of design worlds. I really, really do like that. And yeah, massive thank you again to Googly Guy for sending this in. And yeah, guys, let us know what you think down below in the comments of the system. If you enjoyed the video, let's see if we can go for 200 likes on today's videos, guys. Let's go for a big, big milestone there. So make sure to press that like button if you haven't already. And subscribe. Help us on the journey to 40,000 subscribers. We are getting closer and closer by the day. We are within about 2,000 subscribers now. So yeah, really, really appreciate all your support. And yeah, it should be, uh, should be exciting times ahead. But with that all said and done, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.